Okay, so today I'm doing something different. Um, we made that channel, that video for the channel. Yeah. About five months ago, wasn't it? Yeah, with the uh, 300, 308 and the 6.5 Creedmoor shooting those things. Plus yeah. what, uh, ARs? We had a couple of ARs. Yeah. It's five, been, five, we'll six. have to watch the video again. I'm yeah. Sure. <laughs> but, uh, but he's Cody. Oh yeah, I'm so Corey. I'm the Cody B, and this is the Bald Advice. Bald Advisor, Corey, yep. And uh, Corey was talking to me while I was driving to somebody the other day about, uh, he wanted to do a, a video about fire safety. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the reason we laugh is we're both part of a, I guess it's a club? We, I didn't know it was a club until he told me that there's a club. Well, my friend John Burquist always told me there's two kinds of pilots in the world. There's those who have landed without landing gear and those who will land without landing gear. Well, well there are two kinds of guys who, uh, well, does that even work with shooting yourself? I don't know. Yeah. Well, I shot myself right here, the upper thigh. Been a really good bar party favor thing. <laughs> and he shot it. Where did you shoot yourself? I shot myself on the right butt cheek going down. Yeah. And so uh, straight out. We we brought a uh, little bit of a visual aid today. That's my clock, nine millimeter. It is clear and safe. <laughs> we do that now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For me, I was uh Gonna go out to the dog park with uh, four dogs. Yeah, we're nuts. In a small house, about 11 to 1200 square feet. Yeah, they have to go to the dog park a lot. So uh, um, I took uh, my gun and I tried to put it in and it got stuck and then I had a round in the chamber. Plus, my finger on the trigger, safety off, and uh, I heard a pop. Well, People in the house heard a pop. My wife in the car with the dogs heard a pop. My wife came out and she goes, what did you do? Looking down, there was me <laughs> splattered all over on the, in the garage floor and stuff. Were you in the garage at least? I was in the garage. Okay. Kids were on the other side of the house. My wife was way out in the car. And so uh, we diverted from dog park to Hospital. emergency room. Yeah. yeah. How about you? What happened with you? Well, mine's a little bit more complicated. <laughs> <laughs> it always well, is more complicated. How, how long, so you, you can sit on your cheek now. Yeah. Um, well, you tell your story and then we can talk about it. Well, let's uh, finish your story. Mine's going to take so, <laughs> so with mine, um, got to the hospital, to the emergency room, and walked up and I said I shot myself and the guy was like, well, we need to do this and this and this. And there's comes out. She goes, get in this seat. Let's go. I was like, okay. So we went back and I had people this close to my face, which is what? A couple of inches, six inches mm -hmm. saying, Hey, what happened? What happened? I think I spent the first 15, 20 minutes explaining what happened. Yeah. And, uh, sat on my, uh, my wound for, couple hours before they uh, uh, rolled me to my side and started cleaning that thing. Debriefment? Debriefment. They pulled out some uh, shrapnel, which I have. Yeah, I got that in a container. So what did you have, hollow points or? Uh, ultralight hollow point, nine mil. And it came out of an M&P shield. <laughs> yeah, not the 2.0, but the, the original. And because uh, that's my carry uh, concealed gun. And that's kind of like about this size, or? Oh, it's much smaller. Way smaller. Way and smaller. It's a 9mm? Yeah, it's a 9mm. Nine 9mm. Nine yeah, so same thing that uh, this uh, Glock shoots. But, uh, um, yeah, pulled out some rounds. Uh, not rounds, but shrapnel out of my, uh, my butt. My butt I talks. A, I, have a, I had a hole from the top to the bottom, and you could stick something right through, and you could see through it. Mm -hmm. So uh, for me, the pain level, we're gonna, I'm going to talk about pain level. Yeah. Yeah. It never got me above four. Yeah. My level, nothing above four. 
Uh, I was calling uh, friends and letting them know that I'm okay and stuff. This would happen, and I had I was laughing. How many? Making, which? How many of your friends laughed at you when you did it? Each one of them. Each one of them. Who laughed the hardest? Did I laugh the hardest at you? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Each one of them. And then one friend. He's a ex Air Force guy. Um, a master sergeant. He asked. The, he's the only one to ask the question. Are you okay? <laughs> we're, we're, they're all ripping on me because I shot myself in the ass. He's like, um, are you okay? You're gonna survive this, right? Because <laughs> he's known so many guys in the Air Force and, and Special Forces and uh, you know all those kind of things that have shot themselves, you know, through the hand, whatever else. So he was like, let's check on Corey to make sure that, you know, He's gonna survive this. He's not gonna bleed out or something. So, but uh, um, sent me home and had me set up with an appointment for a uh, uh, a surgeon in a couple of couple of days. And they're like, uh, just just let it be. And my wife, she's like, well, she's an occupational therapist. She loves wounds. Mm -hmm. And so I, she loves she loves wounds. She loves wound care. Her sister loves wound care. So she was on with her sister, and then she's got a couple of friends that are going becoming nurse practitioners that love wounds. <laughs> and so there's a there's pictures of my right, right butt talks floating around of uh, that hole and all that kind of stuff. And you got to keep the pictures, huh? Nope. <laughs> Other people have the pictures. Oh. <laughs> and you know, from the beginning, you know, all the way, it took a couple months. For it to completely heal up, but uh, um, the worst part about it was uh, getting it cleaned. Oh, yeah. Every cleaning, debridement, debri oh. oh man, yeah. Oh, talk about that. That is that is painful. Oh, standing in the shower, um, they gave me uh, was it oxy, um, just like uh, five milligrams, I think it was, or stuff like that, and just only a few of them. I think uh, five. Mm -hmm. And you know, I get oxygenations here, so they don't, they can't give out as many as they they need to and stuff. If you need so, more, you can always come back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm standing in the shower. My wife is uh, cleaning the wound and stuff. Uh, that pain shot through my. I couldn't. I stopped hearing. Oh, the pain my, was so you couldn't yeah, hear. Yeah, I couldn't hear. My vision started narrowing, and I, my knees are started buckling. I'm saying, hey, Ange. That's my wife's name. Hey, um, I'm not feeling well. I, I think I need to get, you know, lay down. You know, this is what's happened. She goes, oh, hell yes. So she's taking me to lay down on the bed. And then she goes, yeah, I'm not going to catch you. <laughs> if you fall. <laughs> no sympathy from the wife, huh? Yeah. I'm not going to get you back up. And so I lay down and, oh, shoot. That was painful. But... Um, I had a grinning bear because, uh, you know, she was taking care of me, so I was thanking her. So, did it go through the, the fat of your butt, or did it go into the muscle, or? It was the fat. The fat of the, the butt. The fat. Yeah. So, uh, they, you know, my wife eventually cleaned up the, the garage a little bit, you know, because they had fat, my, my ass fat, on the ground. That's the good stuff, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> on the ground, plus some blood and all that kind of stuff. Um, powder burn because it was r the the muzzle of the gun was right on my butt cheek, right? Um, so it just blew everything through. And my wife is like, You had a perfect ass, you had a perfect butt. Now one side is dimpled and stuff. I was like, That's more of the, uh, the appeal, right? There, yeah. Hey, at least you know she's checking your butt out, not someone else's. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, I had a nurse practitioner. I'm going to be a nurse practitioner lady come in and uh, do some wound care as uh, my wife went out to um, do some uh, work out in uh, Georgia and stuff and she goes here's a, uh, uh, a thing that uh, measures your oximeter measures your oxygen and stuff and just just watch that as I do that and I was like Wow, that's spiky. <laughs> wow, that hurts. Yeah, she's she's like, like, oh, I, the oxygen level of your blood. You're like, oh, hey, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> is this gonna blow? <laughs> Does this have a threshold? Maybe not. 
But uh, yeah, uh, it, it took a couple months for that thing to heal. And I was happy when I didn't have to have that debriding and all that kind of stuff. My wife thought that, you know, it's got to be go through surgery or stuff like that. Got to cut that dead skin out. And, you know, the worst of the worst. And nope, it didn't. Yeah, so it was pretty cool. Well, as far as gunshot goes, I guess it was. Yeah, good. yeah. It's de definitely a different day of your life. <laughs> yeah, I was talking to the nurses there. This is funny. I goes, you know, what could be worse than shooting yourself in the butt? He goes, well, you could appendix carry. <laughs> oh, appendix carry. <laughs> yeah, oh. it could have been right yeah. next to you. And I was like, you win. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> it could have been a whole lot worse because. That's castration, that's, that's all. Yeah. Gun castration, yes. that brain cut. Yeah. <laughs> My sister, she asked, you know, we've always thought, her and her friend, um, would it be like to shoot yourself? Oh yeah, tickle. And I was like, here's some ball of advice for you. Go ahead, do it. <laughs> <laughs> be a part of this gun club where you shoot yourself. <laughs> the group. Yeah. There's those who have and those who will. <laughs> Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, go ahead. <laughs> but I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> Cody. You want to go do some show and tell real quick? Sure. Let's go. Let's grab the GoPro. We'll go outside. I'll show you what happened. All right. Okay. So show and tell. This is the car I was driving when I shot myself. Right here. Uh, it's still in the family. <laughs> it's not his anymore. <laughs> but I sold it to my brother. But here's the bullet hole. <clears throat> in the door where the bullet went through the car and it's still on the inside. You remove this panel, you could see it. And it used to be, oh, no, there used to be a hole in the seat where it lined up and went through. Okay, so there's the evidence outside of the, that I shot myself in the car. So let's go back in and we'll talk about it. Okay. No, so, we just saw the we saw the, the bullet. Yeah. There's still bullet holes in the car where it got shot. So, uh, 2006, uh, October 2006, I was working on the Alaska Railroad and lived in Alaska. And my brother had joined the Army, and I had quit my job on Alaska Railroad because I didn't want to uh, miss my brother's graduation from the army and my sister's wedding. I thought I could just go back, kind of like a leave of absence. Yeah, that didn't happen, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I uh, leave Alaska, I drive to uh, Wyoming. My brother's, I miss my brother's graduation. We pick him up, we drive him down to Fort Hood. And then we drive back up to Wyoming, finish family reunion drive back to California. While well, I lived in Alaska, I'll, I'll put a picture of it up on the screen, but I bought myself a, night, uh, a Mark 9 Desert Eagle and 44 Magnum. And anyone who's been to Canada knows that you can't transport handguns through Canada. So the only way I could get my gun from Alaska to the United States is I had to disassemble the gun, turn it into parts, and then in three different bags, I put the gun in the parts and shipped it to my cousin's ranch in Wyoming. When I got to Wyoming, I reassembled the gun. Um, but when I reassembled the gun, I didn't put, there's these springs that hold the trigger for the, that push the trigger back out. Yeah. So those springs didn't get put seated properly. So when we were on the ranch and I was test firing the gun, uh, you would fire it and the trigger would stay back. Um, so anyways, we drive, we get back to California with my parents. I go to Watsonville where my grandma lived. Um, oh yeah. I was driving to Watsonville because my friend Steven, who lived in Germany, had, was coming back from Germany after being there as an au pair for a year. So 
I hadn't seen him in a year, so I was driving down to LAX to pick him up from Dixon, where my parents lived. And we got all the way down to Watsonville, and my gun wasn't working, so I took the gun into a gunsmith and asked him, can you figure this out? And like 20 bucks, he took this symbol, the bottom part of the gun, and reset all the springs, put all the springs in the right spot. Now, I lived in Alaska for about a year and a half, two years. Yeah. And I'd forgotten that California has some pretty strict gun laws about you cannot carry firearms within hand reach mm -hmm. at all in a, in a car. Gun has to be in the trunk, has to, the ammo has to be in a container, the gun has to be in separate, everything has to be separated out. I had totally, you know, in Alaska we carried guns with us everywhere. Open carry. Open carry, concealed carry, whatever. We carried guns all the time. Yeah, not the small ones, but the big ones. Big guns. Like, 44 and my, Magnum. my 44 Magnum is a bear, I bought it for bear protection and mm -hmm. I had a chest holster for it. So it would sit right here and we'd go out on the railroad and we'd work and that was my bear gun. And um, now the gunsmith said that I needed to dry fire the gun to help seat the trigger, the uh, trigger assembly. So on my drive down to LAX, I was uh, cocked the gun, fire the trigger, cocked the gun, fire the trigger to help seat that thing. Yeah. Um, With or without the mag in there? Without the magazine in there. Okay. There was no magazine in it. So I'm sitting there driving down in my car. I set my gun. See, I got this gun here. It's clear. It's good. Right. I set the gun in my lap like this. <clears throat> And I would be driving the car, you know, driving like this, right? And, um... <laughs> I'm trying to move away from that barrel. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> he keeps trying to... Oh, it's clear, it's open. I know, but <laughs> uh, I already got myself once. <laughs> so, <coughs> yeah. let's back up a little bit. When my parents, I lived in Paso Robles, and Paso Robles is halfway to L.A. And my friend lives in Paso Robles, so I was going to drive past this house, yeah. pick him up, and then come back, right? Um, we come up, and, or was it? No, I was going to go to Paso Robles and meet up with his parents, and then we were going to go to LAX. Okay. Right? And go from there. And I was going to visit some friends. Now that I'm thinking about it more, I'm kind of getting more of the details back in my head, because it's been, what, 16, 17 years, 2006 to 2016 would be 10, so 14, 15, yeah, 16 years. Um, so anyways, uh, but my mom worked at a hospital, King City Community Hospital. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I stopped in Salinas, California at a wiener schnitzel up there because they didn't have wiener schnitzels in Alaska. And I knew about this one there. So I, I stop at Salinas and I pick up some stuff. Well, when I put the gun back in the center console, like I, I drove with it in the center console for yeah. years. When I put it back in there, I slammed the magazine at the bottom of the gun when I put it back into the console. So now I'm eating my hot dog, driving down the fuck the road. Just Your wiener schnitzel. With my wiener schnitzel, I had the big old wiener schnitzel oh, yeah. with the chili and the onions. And, <clears> oh, <throat> uh, it was delightful. It was splendid. <laughs> <laughs> and we come up, and my ADD kind of kicked in, and I kind of was in this whole mindset of. So I pick my Desert Eagle up, cock it, like I had been doing for the last. Two hour and a half, two hours before that. Well, 45 minutes to an hour, I guess. And I reached down, dropped the mag like that, and I reached down, pulled the trigger, and it was pointed just like this. Mm -hmm. Boom. Now I had some uh, Ocean Pacific board shirts on. Yeah. Swim. They're like swim. Sh they're like shorts you can wear, but they're swim short material. Yes. And those are good stuff. Back in the day. I so the gun goes off, it's 44 Magnum, right? The first thing I remember feeling is this wet sensation in my ear, my head. 
I blown my eardrums out. Yeah. So there, the fluid in my ears were coming down the side of my head. And I remember being like dazed because it was so amazingly loud. Because, A. Hey, um, you could came the concussion. Because you're already in a, uh, a vehicle. Inside a vehicle. Closed, so that concussion is going to hit harder. Mm -hmm. Plus. Well, plus, no, <clears throat> it's close to me, mm -hmm. all this stuff. <laughs> so I popped my eardrums, blew my eardrums out, <laughs> right? And I'm sitting there kind of stunned, driving that Jeep, going, God, that was loud. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, where'd that bullet, oh shit! And I saw the bullet went in here and out there. Now, the Desert Eagle is about probably half again the size of this. It's a big gun. Yeah, it is it's a way big gun. bigger. So it was, it was, the, it was sitting like this. Isn't it about double the size of that? About double, yeah. So yeah. it was sitting like this, but the barrel was laying on my thigh. Yeah. And when I pulled the trigger, it was made direct contact, and it blew a hole through my leg, down through the thing, missed my femur, and it was 10 centimeters from my carotid artery. That's way too much, man. I'm gonna put this away. If you don't know what that means, uh, that's bleed out time right there. Yeah, that's, oh, here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, that barrel up. not flagging yet. <laughs> it's clear, I'm, I'm not trying. So, I grab the gun, yeah. throw it into the driver passenger seat. And now I'm kind of like getting my shit back together, orientating myself. Yeah. So the first thing I did, which was, because I'm panicking now. Well, oh, shit, I shot myself. Oh, am I gonna die? Oh my God, I'm gonna die. I shot myself with a four, four magnum, I'm gonna die. And uh, so I called 911. And when the lady picked up on that, she said, King City Dispatcher. And I remember my mom worked at the hospital, King City. Yeah. And by that time, I'm still traveling down the road doing 75 miles an hour yeah. in a car. And by this time, I had gotten to King City, and I'm like right at the exit. So God provided an exit. For me. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't have to turn around. Got right off the interstate and drove to the to the hospital. And this is the next part where I screwed up. Drove into the ambulance bay. Parked it in the because it's a pull through yeah. ambulance bay, kind of like a hotel house. Really Pulled it through the ambulance bay. Yeah. Parked it there. The security guard comes out, there, my leg is covered with blood. Yeah. Walk into the hospital, and they see me coming, and they open the emergency doors and immediately admitted me into the hospital. Like, no paperwork, <laughs> yeah. nothing. They're like, I, I shot myself in the leg. We can tell you're bleeding on the floor. Come with me. Yeah. I throw the, um, the I, I think this nurse, asked me for the keys because I was blocking the ambulance bay. Well, by that time, they asked me for the keys. They, they, California has a law that if there's a gunshot wound, they have to immediately call the police department. Yeah. Right. So, uh, I think uh, Monterey County Sheriff's come. And uh, um, they called them and they're on their way. I think it was actually the police who asked for the I don't think it was secure. I think it was the police who asked for the keys. Mm -hmm. So I'm sitting there in this bed and they've put this, they got a- Bleeding uh, out. Out of my leg. Yeah. And the, the, the doctor, because we were near a military installation, was an army doctor. And he stuffed into the wound tampons. Mm -hmm. He shoved the tampon in there and what? Popped it, yeah. <laughs> popped it up. And so then, uh, the nurse says to me, before we can take you into surgery, because trust me, son, you're going to surgery. <laughs> um, there's some people here who want to talk to you. Now, they've given me painkillers and all this other stuff. So um, the nurse comes in and the, the sheriffs go, what happened? Who? The first thing the cop asked me that I can remember is, who were you shooting at? And I remember telling the cop, I hope I'm a good enough shot that I would have shot him and not me if I was shooting at somebody. 
<laughs> huh, wow. The That's smartest cool. thing my lawyer said is that I did not make, I could not make a coherent statement because I was under stress mm -hmm. and under uh, medication. So they couldn't. So they gave you medication when you were at the hospital, right? Yeah. I got none when I was at the emergency room. Zero. No? None. Your probably was a whole lot worse than mine. Well, it went through yeah. all this muscle yeah. and stuff. So, um. Missed the, the bone. Yeah. Whew. The doctor comes in to kind of yeah. look at what he's going to be working with us when I'm getting ready to go into surgery. The surgery comes in. Yeah. And, uh, he, he looked at me and I, I'm like, does it look bad? He goes, son, I'm pretty glad. I think today you're glad you weren't better hung. Yeah. <laughs> he goes, but I have to know, were you trying to shoot your penis off? Or was it, I'm like, the only day, sir, I'm glad I, I, I well, <laughs> yeah. so, so the doctor asked me if I was trying to castrate myself with a gun. So. Cause that was pretty close. To it was family. pretty close. Yeah. Uh, so. The next thing I remember is uh, I'm getting wheeled into the operating room and the anesthesiologist is there. And I remember grabbing the anesthesiologist like this. I don't want to remember this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to remember this. <laughs> he goes, well, we could just, I don't care. You have all the drugs at your disposal. I can't remember this. I don't want to remember this. Knock me out, right? So he comes up and uh, the next thing is, he goes, don't worry, I got you covered. Got you covered. The next thing I remember is waking up in the uh, recovery, mm -hmm. in the bed in the hospital. And um, the surgeon comes in, he goes, he took a picture, which I wish I still had, but it went into evidence, right? <laughs> <laughs> now, the, the, the gunshot made the, the pressure of that bullet, you know, the f muzzle flash coming off of it, had torn the skin so much that when he was in there debriding it, and they had to go cut all the dead tissue out of stuff, that it exposed it, and he showed me my carotid artery in this picture. Jeez. Well, I didn't see the picture then. I actually saw it when I came in for the yeah. follow-up. He showed me the pictures of the stuff, and then they got seized by the police department. So, um, you know, I'm sitting there, and that was the only, I really got a lot of sympathy because I couldn't sleep because every time I fall asleep, I could hear that gunshot in my head and I'd wake up and I'd remember, remember, remind myself I'm in the hospital. Post-traumatic stress right there. Yeah. The, I, the cool thing was, is my mom knew the people because she worked with them for like 10 or 15 years. Yeah. For however long it was. She worked at the hospital. One, I got the family discount. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> to uh, my, they knew who I was because I'd been there. So my parents, um, so so I wake up, and uh, I think her name was Jerry or something was the nurse's name. I don't know. Sure. Yeah, we'll Let's go with her. Jerry. Yeah, we'll go with Jerry. She says, uh, "I know who you are." I'm like, "Oh, you found my wallet." She goes, "No, you've been coming here since I watched you grow up, kind of thing." So I called your mom, and they're on their way. And I'm like, can I get some more of that <laughs> anesthesia? <laughs> so my mom and dad bring down this big ass motor home. They had a bigger one than they have now. Yeah. And I was laying to, so I could lay on the couch so I could keep, cause I couldn't move my leg. So, cause uh, the, 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 they stuck a stint in there to help it drain or yeah. drain to keep it. Cause they wanted it to heal from the inside out. So with both uh, Cody and my uh, wound, we both had to um, work from the, the inside out for the healing. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, other complications would happen, infection um, from the dead skin and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, yeah, we both had that same thing. So uh, about a, about two weeks, about probably a week later, we went back down there to the fall up and. And that was the, the second most painful thing I've ever been through in my life. Yeah. When they pulled the drain out, they pulled that thing out and that was just horribly painful. And they numbed it all up and then they stitched it closed. So uh, a little highlight of well, that period is my dad, I still have the truck, I sit out there, I had my pickup truck, 
um, my dad's car, he locked his keys in this car. And I was stuck at home because I couldn't walk. So I had to go and get my dad his spare set of keys for his car. But the only car I had was my stick shift. How many weeks after was this? This is probably two weeks after being shot. Two weeks. So there's stitches still in my yeah. Home, right? After it's been stitched off and everything. They, re- they put new stitches in there and stuff. And it's a stick shift. Yeah, and it was only... Five speed? Yeah, it's five speed. So you have to push the clutch in to put it in gear. And it was that was the most painful thing. Yeah. I get to my dad's, <clears throat> to the store, or my, the restaurant my dad and my brother were eating at. Oh, no, it was just my dad, I think. My brother was in the army. But uh, anyways, the tears are just crying, just going yeah. from the pain. So the dad, that was the, the most painful thing during it. The actual gunshot wound didn't hurt at all. Yeah. Right. Th- yeah. It, it didn't hurt at all. It was all nothing. So the third most painful thing was is now because I hadn't moved my leg, but very, and I had to walk on crutches and stuff. Um, I think about week four or five, they finally cut the stitches out, and every single day, my mom would come in because she's a nurse. With this thing, it looked like a pipe cleaner. Yeah. Like like you would clean your your sink. Yeah. And she'd shove that in as far as she could and pull it out and debride it and cleaning. That was pretty. God, that was so pain. Did you have uh, any oxy or anything like that to, to touch the, to keep the pain low or or it was just I don't remember. Suck it up, Buttercup. My mom was just like. <laughs> I remember my mom being here, t- changing it out. Yeah. And going, uh, this will teach you. <laughs> <laughs> Cleaning it out. And yeah. Scraping it all out and stuff. And so finally I got to the point where I was healed up enough. Yeah. And, uh, and we went to the doctor. He cut the last stitches up. And then um, now they go, uh, well, it's time for rehab. I had to learn how to fluff that muscle out and stuff. But at this point... I left Alaska, had no wife, no kids, no house, I had nothing up there. I, I had to pay rent, but I was like 300 bucks a month. So I had all this, probably had like $130,000 in my bank account. The fastest way to lose $130,000 is to shoot yourself in the leg in California. Yeah. Because when I left, about four weeks after this, I got a summons to appear in court. And it was, I was being charged with, um, I got charged with reckless discharge of a firearm. Okay. I can understand that. Yeah. Right? Illegal transportation of a firearm, illegal transportation of ammunition, and uh, illegal possession of an assault rifle. Which, that doesn't make sense. Well, I had, AK-4, I had an AK-47 in the back. That's the answer then. <laughs> All right, yeah. Okay. It makes sense. No, it was an AK. It was an AR-15. It had an AR-15 in the back of the car. Which I was able to get the AR-15. I did not. I bought that in Wyoming. <laughs> it was there. <laughs> so, um, so they confiscated my guns. They, that Glock there that was confiscated. Mm-hmm. Um, Desert Eagle. The Desert Eagle was confiscated. The shotgun in the car was confiscated. The AR-15 was confiscated. And the AR-15 was confiscated, right? So I, uh, they were all, they all got taken away. So now, the amount of money I had to pay the hospital was about sixty-five thousand dollars. Clear that bill up. And sixty-five grand. Shoot. Yeah, clear that up. And then. Um, and the, with whatever was left over, I had about twenty-five thousand dollars. I had to pay to the lawyer to keep me from going to jail. So I originally thought that I could just go get a public defender, and I get all that. And yeah. Tried the public pretender, and he goes, "But you shot yourself." <laughs> I'm like, hmm? "Okay." 
So, not to bore you with that story. <laughs> the public defender was against him. <laughs> the public defender was on the plus. You can't have a, a, a lawyer that's on the prosecution's side. Yeah. So, uh... <laughs> <laughs> You're going to jail, buddy. <laughs> he's going to jail. <laughs> and he's going to help you. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, I went and hired him. Adam Fairburn, which I think he's in jail now, but... <laughs> Maybe you're not. <laughs> uh, but uh, I had to hire a lawyer. Yeah. Couldn't work, couldn't do nothing. So while I'm fighting this legal battle with the, the sheriff's department and the Monterey County DA and all that stuff, I had to go to rehab. And then uh, while I was going to rehab, the way, uh, I, so I'm out of money. You know, I'm just, I've blown through all my money paying for all this stuff. Paint doctors. Yep. The hospital was 65. The doctor was like 10 grand. I mean, it cost a lot of money. You don't just got the hospital, you got the doctor, you got the medication, everything. And when I left Anything. my job, it was a leave of access slash I quit kind of thing. But I lost all my medical benefits. So I had to pay for it all out of pocket, which is where I found out you can negotiate medical mm -hmm. But we did all that. Um, we went to the pub at the time. I was still a resident of Alaska, so I uh, went to the. Um, we went there with the new lawyer, and I got. He went in there and he wanted to have a jury trial, trial by jury. And the judge basically tells the DA, "Who's the victim of the crime here?" He shot himself. Well, he has to learn and all and all and all and all. So the judge took the two lawyers into his chambers. And he came back and they dropped all the charges except for the reckless discharge of a firearm. Yeah. And the uh, carrying of a loaded weapon in the vehicle. And then I pled no contest to that with five years of suspended sentence. And with the conditions that I could have my AR-15 back, all my guns back. But I had to leave California within 48 hours and go back to Alaska. <laughs> <laughs> so I had an unsupervised probation. <laughs> so I took all the guns. Well, and it's not just, but, you can't just leave in 48 hours because uh, in California you have to get a letter from the California Department of Justice clearing you, a clearance letter that then you have to give to the Sheriff's Department allowing them to return the guns to you. So you yeah. have to go through a background check, get your own gun, to give them back to you. Yeah. So I couldn't just leave, so I go, fine, I'll leave in 48 hours. I drive back to Sacramento, go to the Department of Justice stuff, fill the form all out for each gun, right? And it's like, so I, I fill all these forms out, and then I had to drive to San, back to Salinas, where they had in their evidence place, and get the guns out of there. And to this day, and you've seen it, the box that I keep my Desert Eagle in is an evidence box. I should have had that gun when I told it, that box. <laughs> yeah. That's case number, because they, uh, and they didn't return any of the ammunition. They kept all the ammunition, but they just returned the firearms. And they returned me the Air 15 without the bolt carrier, non-operable. We don't give back dangerous guns, <laughs> functional. And I'm like, all guns are dangerous, <laughs> why would so? <laughs> I'm the only person I've ever met or I've ever heard of that got California to give back an assault rifle. Hmm. So, and you've seen that rifle. Yep. You've seen that assault rifle. I still have all that stuff. Yeah. Did we use that in uh, the first video that we did together? No, that was the uh, no. the other. That gun is the A-frame one though, okay. with the carry handle on it. No. So got them all back. So now I have all my guns back. I take my shotgun, throw it in the thing, load my car back up, drive back up to Alaska. But now, because I have a misdemeanor, I can't... See, the Alaska Railroad is like the uh, post office. 
It's a, it's a subsidiary of the United States government. It's an independent company, but it's owned by the U.S. Yeah. government. The other reason they have the Alaska Railroad is to service the military bases. So they service um, uh, the Elmendorf and Fort Richardson, Alaska, and then they f Fort Wainwright up in um, northern Alaska and uh, Fairbanks. Yeah. They service those bases. And I think there's a couple more, but I don't remember their names and it doesn't matter. But that's why the railroad is there. Is the side benefit of them doing that is they can haul freight and do all this other stuff. Yeah. But their main reason that railroad is there is to service the, um, the military. So in order to work for the Alaska Railroad at that time, you had to be able to pack, pass the background check. So... When I went back to Alaska, I've committed a misdemeanor involving firearms, mm -hmm. so now I won't clear the background check. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what do I do? Drive all the way back to California and become a resident a month later. <laughs> Go in, yeah. apply for a, because now uh, the doctor had my leg declared 10% disabled, so now I qualify for a rehabilitation loan. So California paid to rehabilitate me. And then when I, when I got done with the court stuff, I had to pay $1,300 fine. And I had to pay $2,000 in restitution. And the court judge said, now I think it was funny when I asked him, I've been the violent victim of a violent crime. Can I apply for restitution? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So my, my story's a little bit more involved. Yeah, it is. But uh, that's why you need to make sure that you keep your uh, guns clear. Yeah. Always clear a gun, and every gun that you handle is loaded until proven otherwise. And you don't point at anything that you don't want to destroy. Yeah. And, and if I was a younger man, at almost 40 years old, I probably would show pictures of the gun start wound. But yeah. Uh, yeah. my wife was, does not appreciate that when I show that gun start wound. But there's a hole here. It's big. The hole here is about, I can feel it, it's about that big. Okay. Yeah. And the hole in the backside is tiny. The... So that's story time for today. Yeah, that's uh, safety, gun safety. Um, why you shouldn't uh, point a gun at anything or anyone, you including yourself. yourself. <laughs> Shoot, don't, don't do it. Yeah, because it uh, doesn't matter if it's uh, a 22, uh, nine mil, which is me, right? Or forty-four. Four um, it all is gonna hurt. The hole is gonna be different, right? Oh, yeah. But uh, it's all gonna do damage. <laughs> what if I have a bullet up there on the shelf? Oh, by the way, this is our reloading area, so we know a little bit about bullets. But yeah, poquito. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's uh, gun safety. This will go into the gun safety or the guns area of the video, yeah of the my YouTube channel, and uh, I'm Co the Cody B, and this is... I'm Corey, the bald advisor, giving some bald advice. And yeah. our, <laughs> his advice today is... Don't cheat yourself. <laughs> <laughs> it costs you more than you ever wanted. And for everyone who ever wanted to know, shooting yourself is not painful, but the healing part is. Oh, oh <laughs> it is. Oh, it is. So, that's story time. Maybe we'll do this some more often. This little Yeah. Bit. We'll be back in town. Yeah, when I come back up here. Yeah. So, um, all right. Thank you very much. We'll catch you guys later. Bye.